Big Christmas and Happy Friday to everyone. It is time for another Jujutsu Kaisen chapter. Not review this time. We're doing the live reaction. And once again, to reiterate, it is your host of the most griever as always. And why do we sometimes do live reactions? Well, it's when we're pressed for time because even if the runtime of a live reaction is significantly longer than a review, there is more time and thought put into a review. Of course, of course there is. So with that being said, let's just jump right into chapter 207 of Jujutsu Kaisen. So let's see. Oh, it's it's black, not white. So it's black, not white. So we're into a flashback scene. Let's see. Um, it doesn't matter as long as he dies. For the sake of my mother's curse, which makes up half of me and my brothers. And also for Yuji's future. Ah, oh, Chozo being the man. Chozo being the man. Yugi says, fine, but at least listen to our plan first. Oh, says Chozo. I see. You're going to dismantle his domain. That's why we'll need your help for the la later stage. But wait, it's still better for me to go alone first. Hmm? Oh, so th they, he improved upon the plan. Let's go. Domains are strong, but expanding one will burn out the user's curse technique. The trade-off is it's hard to use curse techniques for a bit. True, but it only lasts minutes for high for high rank. Then again, minutes is enough to kill. Yeah, so let's go. I imagine you and Tengen want to target that gap. And that is the plan, yeah. But if he's expecting an ambush from me, won't Kamo Noritoshi just not expand his domain? Oh, I mean, ah, fair point, Chozo. So Chozo came up with the first part of the plan. We need Kamo Noritoshi to defeat me once, so he'll fully believe that it's a one-on-one -on -one fight between me and Sukumo now. And then in he rocks. There he is, looking badass with his hair not in some girly fucking Sailor Moon pigtail. I don't know what he's doing with his hair. Looking like a man. Bloody and dirty. That's my kind of man. And boom. Here we go. Hit this bitch. And Yuki, uh-huh. Boom. Oh, and Yuki's like, oh, I'm using, gr I'm, you have gravity. I'm using mass, bitch. And then Garuda taking down Kenjaku. Oh, so heavy. And then here it is. Slam. Time for the piercing blood to the face. Let's go. Piercing blood to the face. Are you watching? My little brothers, it's parent killing time. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? I... Oh. Oh, wait. Chozo. Props to Chozo for trying, but leave the one-liners to the professionals. Holy shit, that's bad. Oh, that, that is goddamn awful. That is a terrible line. You know, if it was any other line, I would believe that Kenjaku would die. But because he said it's parent killing time, I literally, I can hear that in, um, in DBZA, Dragon Ball Z, a bridge, a Kriller time. It's time for, it's Kriller time! No, and then down, you know, like... I feel like Chozo's about to get mucked. Yeah. All right. It's parent killing time. What the fuck type of line is that? That is so stupid. Uh, accurate, but stupid. Let's see. And Pierce of Blood. It hit him. Oh, shit. It hit him. Blood everywhere. I see the blood. I see the line. The line hit him in the head. And there's blood. And wait, they're shocked. Yuki's shocked. Chosen shocked. Don't sweat it. I, oh. Wait, wait. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Are you telling me that he literally did his quick boop decapitation thing sort of idea so that the that's where the blood came from. He forcefully removed the head so that the thing wouldn't get pierced and he only pierced like the the spinning forehead port part or something. What what the actual fuck? And it's fully removed now this time. Like you know how most times he does this and he puts it back on? This time it's fully removed. How is he going to put that back on again? Um he says don't sweat it. So let's see. So he didn't hit him. I call bullshit, but okay, he didn't hit him. And 
the neck spin boxing trick that made his skull cap spin and mitigate piercing blood. Let's see. Things are getting interesting, Fallen Warrior. And there's Kanji. Is a Fallen Warrior is often depicted with an arrow through a, a bald top head. And Kenjaku's sewing his head right back on. It seems like it scraped his brain. So he didn't. Because it's still bleeding. You expect me to believe that the reason that that didn't fucking just blow Kenjaku's brain off is, hey, I'm Kenjaku. I'm Noritoshi. I'm the I'm the Japanese stallion. I come here to box. You know what I'm saying? Ooh, you know, Tengen, Tengen. You know, like, you expect me to believe, and that was a terrible Sly Stallone uh, impression, but you expect me to believe that Kenjaku, at point blank range, learned some fucking boxing technique? What is this, Hajime no Ippo all of a sudden? Bull fucking bullshit, man. Fucking bullshit that he, boop! That is so stupid. I'm, I'm not, not only, not only is it stupid that he did the whole, whoop miss me but you're implying that he's like oh he removed the cap so that the piercing blood would only scrape the brain and then he used the spinning neck box technique so it only grazed his head and stuff like that so what now kenjaku is fucking ipo kenjaku is all of a sudden fucking apollo creed up in this bitch he's a master boxer because the next spin boxing trick is not i i know what they're talking about that's not some beginner adept level technique to pull that off at point blank range that's some heavy that's master class boxing to be able to pull that stunt off i call bullshit i'm sorry i call like i we all know kenjaku is not losing this fight we all know that and i'm not and i have no problem with that kenjaku is the main antagonist he is super strong he is are easily in the top five strongest that we've seen thus far in the series but i don't want him to win through or not die because of that that that's just kind of stupid you know I, I don't know i don't like it but anyways um but boom oh then all right how did that kick she just kicked him how did that kick not take his head off if she's got the mass like, she, so she says, but kicked him. That looks like it's directly in the face. How is his head not gone from his neck? Because remember the technique that when she last threw him, like used a soccer ball kick, it fucking sent him miles and fucking destroyed the barrier. That's how fucking badass her kicks are. And now you, like, how did that not... Wait a minute. How did that not kill... Maybe it did. I know it didn't, but still. That should have fucking killed him right then and there. His his neck... I don't care if he can do... Boop! You know, with his, the top half of his fucking forehead. Uh, There's no fucking way that kick didn't fucking... Gone. So, let's, let's see how... They're, are they going to explain that, or... Luckily, her injury lessened the output of Bombayi. That's what we're going with. Okay, all right. Uh, otherwise, that would have been dangerous. Yeah, your neck and head should still be over there. I don't give a fuck how. Like, luckily, her injury lessened the output of Bombayi. That still should have fucking broke his neck. It, like, at full strength. His head is fucking a soccer ball that's kicked 10 miles that direction. At, at an injured version, it still breaks his neck bones. Like, how did that whiplash not destroy him? Jesus. And then, so now we're going to say that Bombay is now at like 2% or Ghetto Seguro's body is fucking built like fucking Arnold Schwarzenegger's or something. He's got Dwayne... 
Dwayne Johnson's entire workout routine in the neck muscles or some shit. Okay, sure, 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 okay. Uh, but if he resorted to that kind of trick, thinks Yuki, doesn't that mean we've got him cornered? All right, so Chozo and Yuki going in for close hand-to-hand -hand combat seemingly are actually getting attacks in. And the fact that Garuda is still uh, seemingly circled around him, Oh takes another elbow to the... All right, so semi blocked it, but he should be in rough shape. And Chozo right there, face palming him and stuff. And Yuki behind him, got to recover Bombayi's output. That all right? That's a good strategy, Chozo. Sukumo, heal up. Fair point. All right, so reverse cursed technique. You've been a big help, Oni Chan. And then Gato notices this is the opportunity. Takes Garuda and foam gets spins out, gets out of Garuda. So let's see. He got out in the brief moment Bumbayi was weakened because I was operating reverse curse technique. So she can't, of course, because your focus is... All right, I, that I don't mind. It's like, okay, if she's not entirely focused on using her curse technique all, the entire time, there is going to be a second difference where she goes, reverse curse technique. Yeah, keeping the mass up, but it's sort of like a computer, you know? You load you load uh, your, your your internet browser and it, depending on how many programs you load at once, all of a sudden the, the CPU is going, oh, we gotta load multiple things at once and the usage you know, gets higher and the focus is split. So I like that, I don't mind that. Um, so she's got Garuda back though, didn't destroy it. Garuda, swing, slam, oh, uh, doesn't seemingly, Kenjaku dodges, but seemingly threw uh, Garuda like a whip to try to Bring it. Holy shit, that's a lot of damage. Like, look at that damage. God damn. Chozo coming out. Here comes Yuki. They're both going at it. And then... Garuda's coming in. Chozo's coming in. And... Gravity came back. Okay, like... And the time limit there, I'm not... I don't have a problem with. Because high-level sorcerers, really high-level sorcerers, uh, can recover, even after using domain expansion, can recover their curse techniques in minutes. And I would argue that was minutes. So that that's totally fine. All right, so gravity's back. That sucks. Um, and shows his face down. Shit, 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 shit. His curse technique recovered already. And now he thinks he's won, which he might have now that he's got gravity back. Um, but I wonder, why doesn't, at this point, why doesn't Yuki, now that she's recovered, she could use her original. She only used simple d domain to throw him off. What if she used her real domain expansion at this point? You know, because remember, Kenjaku doesn't have the, he doesn't have the six eyes and he doesn't have, and he's not Yuta. So he can't spam domain expansion, can he? Like, could he use domain expansion right now? He just recovered his technique. Can he use it again? Does he have enough reserves? Like, we don't see his mana bar, so we have no idea. Could he use domain expansion right now? If he had to? Maybe... But for some reason, I'm thinking, no, that's basically only unique to two people in this series because of the Boundless Curse energy and the Six Eye. Without that, it he hasn't recovered his Curse energy. All he's done is recovered from the, from the recoil of using Domain Expansion. So he's still used up a shit ton of Curse energy. I, I would argue that almost no source outside of Special Exceptions, I would argue every Sorcerer has a Monopool of their cursed energy and it takes more than half to activate domain expansion. I would argue it's like, all right, I'm going to use 65%, 70%, boom, and and that is my domain expansion. That's what I would argue here. So potentially, Kenjaku, of course, being a, a very odd individual himself, he might be able to activate it one more time. And maybe they don't want to gamble that, but I'm thinking that the end of this chapter goes, Yuki activates her actual DE and uh, Kenjaku can't activate his. But he could still maybe activate that really cool or that really souped up simple domain that Tengen was worried about. Because I would argue that simple domain takes a lot less cursed energy to activate than a real domain, right? It's still a domain, but it's more of a, it's a like a second class domain, right? So maybe they're not gonna, I, I still think this ends with Yuki activating domain because she reversed curse techniques, so she's healed, so she should be good to go. Okay, Garuda is seemingly getting back up, striking at Kenjaku, and nope, the gravity goes down again. 
and Chozo still down. Yuki, six seconds. What six seconds? The technique's effective range has a radius of two to three meters around the sorcerer. Ah, uh, they figured out how, how the, the distance of gravity for six seconds. Ah, uh, because Garuda tried to get up. She was counting mentally. After six seconds, Garuda was able to get back up before he had to reactivate it. So it only, so the gravity thing is only, is only about, is less than 10 feet in front of you. And also, only because two to three meters is, you know, a meter is three feet, roughly, give or take. So nine meters at, nine feet at best. So less than 10 feet around the user and only good for six seconds before he's got to spam it again. So, let's see. Then he fills the cooldown interval between using it because she got Garuda back. Oh, he, no, he got hit or dodge, I'm not sure. With Cursed Spirit Manipulation. Oh, that's a cool looking Cursed Spirit. But against me, yeah, Cursed Spirit's no good against you. That won't buy you time. Getting close. I can win. Oh, shit. I feel like, no, I thought this chapter was going to end on Yuki. Domain expansion. Spidey senses. Uh, but now, I feel like because she goes, I can win. The last panel's going to be, like, her... Like, I don't know, like she loses an arm or some shit. Or, or Kenjaku just does one of those. You think you've been fighting me the entire time. Is this going to be a Lloyd Roy thing? It's not really even Kenjaku. It's a stand-in or some shit. It's a cursed spirit from cursed spirit manipulation. That's a doppelganger that looks and acts like Kenjaku. Maybe. I have no idea. I can win. Slams him in the face. Wait. Wait a minute. She just, she's got Bumbaye back at full strength and punched him in the face. Straight on. You can make the argument up above. His head, those neck muscles, nobody's got neck muscles like that. Fucking Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta does not have neck muscles like they're trying to tell me Kenjaku's got neck muscles. That's bullshit. That head is gone. That head is a volleyball. That shit is a home run out of the park. Fucking gone. It's not even in the stadium anymore. I don't care. That, like, how, how? Let's see. Unless, what did he do? Put up a shield? Because we don't actually see his face. It's from the back of his head. Reverse curse technique and his domain chipped away his cursed energy. Yeah, it would. And with Onichen, we weakened his body. Gravity isn't as flexible as I thought. That's true. If that's the effective range, then even if he uses it right now next to me, I can build up a last minute dodge. I gotta attack. A chance like this doesn't come twice. And seemingly punched. Okay, wait, what? Notices. She, wait. They're implying she didn't hit him? Cause there he is and he's got her arm. What's he going to do? Is he going to use Idle Transfiguration? If he can, once again, I'm confused. I thought he already used it once, and he can't use it again. So, because that was explained uh, in previous chapters. So, is he going to Idle Transfiguration right now? Instead, now that he's touching her, is he going to Idle Transfiguration Yuki? He's going to waste Idle Transfiguration to win the fight? Which, that would mean that he was pushed to his limit, that he had no choice but to waste his one chance to use Idle Transfiguration, which is a big thing, so that means that this was, like, Kenjaku was pushed. This was not an easy W by any means. And I don't think it is anyways, but that, you know, I don't mind that. I still don't get why they're showing this panel like she, like she hit him in two panels. Two separate, wait, that's, what's that arm? And then... He, wait, she didn't, she did hit him, because that's a different arm. She punched with her left at first, then her right, and he's got her right arm. So she did connect with the left arm.
and Kenchaku's whole, even if you want to argue the neck muscle thing, remember last time she got a full hit on him? He went that direction? How is he still standing there? Am I crazy? I feel like this is inconsistent as fuck. She got Bombaye back at full strength because she used reverse curse technique. So she can use the full output of Bombaye. Which was shown to fucking send this motherfucker flying. And now he took at least one hit at a full powered one. And he just, you hit like a girl? Like what the, what the fuck? I don't understand. But okay, so he let's let's just say that let's ignore all that for a moment. Let's see what happens and what the fuck is that? It's a ball of like it's a Rasengan or something? What's he got going on there? Blasts her in the face. Oh, a mini Uzumaki. Oh, that's what yeah, now that I see it, now that I look again, yeah, a mini Uzumaki. Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah. You know what? I, I'm not surprised that he would learn how to do the condensed thing. That's been done since since Christ was a cowboy in manga. Um, the uh, idea of, I've got this super-powered weapon or whatever, and now I've condensed it to a more concentrated form or, or a mini form. It's not as powerful, but it's, it's, it's either you condense it down and it's way more powerful, way more lethal, or you condense it down into a miniature form and it's not as powerful, but it still packs a punch. So let's go, Uzuma, a slam in the face. Oh, she did, she blocked, but she did take some damage, damn. A mini Uzumaki. And then, oh, he's under, oh shit, and he's gonna summon another one. The fact that your weight doesn't seem to change when you use Bumbai means that even if the density increases, your durability doesn't. I screwed up, says Yuki, and Tsukumo yells Chozo a direct hit. Oh, shit. She just took a mini, mini Uzumaki. She's got, she got a hollow hole in that, in that, uh, in her abs right now. Yeah. Damn. That is one. Oh, okay. I did not expect this to happen. I was not expecting this. Still expected Kenjaku to win overall somehow. Um, was not expecting a minute Uzumaki. That's interesting. Now I'm curious. It doesn't seem to be near as powerful as the big one. So I'm thinking it's the latter of the two I explained. That it's not as strong as the big main real Uzumaki. But this is like I'm only using so many quick spirits. As many as I can form at one quick time. And bam. Sort of like uh, instead of being a nuke. It's a pistol. It's still a bullet. It'll still pierce. But, you know, obviously a bullet from a pistol is not as good as a, as a missile, right? Does more damage for more range. Um, using the Kisuke Urahara metaphor with that one. A missile can be fired once, a revolver six times, you know? Um, using his, uh, his metaphor there, or analogy, whatever. So, so that's the reaction. Um, not a bad chapter as far as fights go. It kept me on the edge of my seat. That, that, that was a pretty good chapter. The parenting killing time. Parent killing time. A line has got to be the highlight of this chapter. That's awesome. That's hilarious. Now, as I said, I still don't buy this bitch's neck muscles. You expect, you expect me to be convinced of two things. One, Kenjaku in a in a world where boxing is not the main like he's not from thailand he's not from america he's not from these places you expect me to believe that kenjaku mastered the art of boxing alongside of all his curse story and all that stuff i don't argue that he's a good hand-to-hand -hand fighter but are you telling me instead of i don't know judo karate jujitsu jujitsu kaisen jujitsu or anything like that uh aikido you're telling me that this motherfucker learned boxing. Boxing. And didn't just learn it. Learned it to a degree where he can, at point blank range, use a very difficult technique used by master class level boxers in the real world. 
Mm. Issue one right there. Issue two, because it's kind of like, I don't mind that he dodged it, but make it, make some cursed spirit manipulation take it place thing. Don't, don't leave me to believe this guy is, hey, I'm Kenjaku, the Japanese stallion. You know, like, don't make me believe that this guy's supposed to be like that, right? Um, and number two is, once again, those neck muscles. Those neck muscles have some fucking Saiyan genes in them. They've got they've got the combination. You've seen the Expendable films? All, every fiber of muscle in three Expendable films packed into one, and that doesn't even come close to the first density of one of his neck veins, man. Because this man took... This man should, first off, be, been beheaded a couple of times. The second off, should have been sent flying in one direction or another. I don't care. North, south, east, what? You can send upwards for all I give a shit. Uh, fact of the matter is, I'm, I got some power inconsistency right here. I'm just saying. Because even in this chapter, the reason I argue that is even in this chapter, they say the only reason that he, that uh, Bombaye is really weakened is because of her physical condition. So Chozo says... I'll distract him. Use reverse curse technique. She uses it. She's fully healed. Boom by ease output. They make a point to say that's the only reason that her hits aren't fucking destroying him right now. Like pounding him into powder. And the fact of the matter is, is that then she does exactly what she said. She did. It's not like she didn't have an opportunity. She did get fully healed. She's got the max output. Then she gets a hit off on him. It, and it didn't do anything. I don't understand. How, how did it only scrape his face a little bit? Like, what the fuck? Am I missing something here? I might be missing something here. But still, that's the way I read it, guys. Um, that's the reaction. Hope you guys enjoyed. Happy Christmas. I still like the chapter. I just have those two problems. I have the problem with the all of a sudden Kenjaku's Rocky Balboa. And also number two is, once again, those neck muscles. Goddamn, those neck muscles. I mean, I got a really skinny neck, so maybe I'm just jealous. Maybe, maybe. Um, but anyways, yeah. So, happy Christmas, everybody. Happy Friday. Hope you guys enjoyed uh, the reaction and the video. Definitely like the chapter. I'm curious if this is the true end of the fight. I, I think right here we're... I mean, reverse curse technique's a thing, but I think we're sort of on the back foot here, and I think this is where they sort of wrap it up, and Kenjaku wins or has to retreat or something. So, or we get death flags galore for the, these two awesome characters. So, uh, either way, like, comment, and subscribe as always. Don't forget to drink responsibly as I always do. And once again, happy Christmas, happy New Year's. Uh, we might get one more chapter. I didn't see a break next week thing, so we might get a chapter. Uh, Literally right before Christmas. Um, so there might be one more Christmas chapter. That'll be really cool. Uh, but if not, if I don't have time for it, because I'm not... Probably not going to be sitting here on Christmas Day. Just saying, guys. So uh, we'll have to wait and see what uh, how the holidays go. But I uh, hope you guys have your plans. Get your beer, get your food, have your turkey. Do whatever you want. If you don't celebrate Christmas, well... Have a happy day off. Have a happy long weekend. I don't know. Anyways, happy Hanukkah. Happy whatever you celebrate. Happy everything. Happy everything. Just happy Friday. It's Friday. Yay. All right. Have a good one. See you next time. Bye-bye.